Hey, we're back for some more Green Line Chechnya. We are on turn three, and we are ready for the Russian Random Event Die Roll. Let's roll some dice and see what we get. Let's see, we're going to take the Chechnya Die Roll in white times 10, so that's 30. It looks like 36. Let's see what 36 is like. Let's flip the page over. And 36 is going to be Covert, covert Arms Trade. Reinforcements immediately, well, the resistance player immediately receives one mechanized or one headquarters unit in any friendly controlled city or town. So, one headquarters or mechanized unit. Each combat this game turn with Russian airborne, air assault, helicopter, or air unit involved that is resolved with a die roll of one causes the uh, let's see here elimination of one such Russian unit. So that is what's going to be happening this turn. We will come back the Russian player uh, reinforcement segment. I decided to put the Chechnyan uh, immediate reinforcement from the random events table in this hex right here. I brought in a mechanized uh, unit. I'm going to try and, well not necessarily form a line, but just kind of try to create um, some strong points here and there. And hopefully I can deny that hex <clears throat> to the Russians for a little bit. Um, keeping it as a supply source for the uh, che Chechnya units. Alright, but that's neither here nor there. We are ready for the Russian reinforcement phase. Not sure what I'm going to bring on. Uh, so far, we're doing pretty good. <clears throat> With respect to air attacks, uh, you can apply only one air unit in a mountain or rough terrain. In clear, you can apply, or in a city, only one. In uh, clear, you can put up to two air units. So, most of the Chechnyan units are <clears throat> in rough terrain or clear, or rough terrain or cities. So, there's not much I can really use air power for at the moment. Especially when I'm hitting Chechnyan units with 18 strength points to their two or three or whatever. So, looks like twos. So, until we get to the Battle of Grozny, uh, in which I will lose political points on the political index for using air power, I don't see a need for it at the moment. I think we're okay with respect to enough uh, uh, force that I don't think I need to bring in any more Russian units at this time. So we will proceed to Russian movement and combat. All right, back again. This is the at the end of the Russian movement phase. Um, units that are rotated are ones that have moved or are going to participate in an attack against adjacent resistance units. So, as you can see, we're going to make attack here and here versus that unit. Should probably uh, destroy it this turn. Uh, up here, we're going to attack this unit with the headquarters, and there's another unit under it. And that uh, security regiment. And then we're going to use the 266 and the 40th security regiment to attack this unit. And I think that's going to be it for direct attacks. We should be on the outskirts of Grozny by next turn. And then we can go ahead and uh, uh, go ahead and assault it and start racking up political points. Which are basically victory points for the resistance player. So 
Let's see what happens. I'll come back after I've resolved my attacks. It's just easier that way video-wise. Okay, at the end of the Russian combat phase, we have four eliminated resistance player militias units, militia units. Uh, let's go back over here. See if I can remember what exactly happened. Uh, there was a militia unit right here. We forced it to retreat. It was surrounded by enemy zones of control and could not retreat. So it was eliminated. Uh, and the 119 advanced into the hex uh, on the outskirts of, uh, well, close to Grozny anyway. There was a unit up here. The militia unit was right here. We eliminated it. Uh, it couldn't retreat. Any unit that's reduced uh, is forced to retreat. And it couldn't retreat into any of the adjacent hexes without entering a zone of control. So it also was eliminated. Down here, the 266 and the 40th attacked another militia unit. And it had to retreat two hexes and couldn't because of zones of control. So it was eliminated. Uh, let's see, where else? I think that was it. I think the other two came last turn. So anyway, we are, as a Russian player, uh, making considerable advances. However, being with each week, each turn being a week, you know, we spent three weeks now and we still haven't reached Grozny, so um, I guess that uh, that's something. Okay, we are going to go into recovery and logistics. All Russian units are in supply. They're either within two hexes of a headquarters, which can trace a supply line, uh, the lines of communication. I need to check this headquarters over here double check it's not on a supply line or line of supply so whatever it's called I think everybody else is within two hexes of headquarters that it can trace supply back to a supply source so uh, we'll proceed to the resistance players random events phase right after this all right turn three resistance players turn we are going to roll for random events let's see what we get here we get a 22. 2 times 10 is 20, plus we add the 2 for 22. And that will be on the back side of this uh, chart. I think it's ironic that these charts are found on the back side of the map, so that you have to photocopy them or print them, uh, because otherwise you can't use the... Uh, charts and tables once you have the map uh, spread out. Very poor design. Anyway, what did I say it was? It was 22. 22 is a UN ceasefire proposal. I don't know. I'm wondering if a uh, resistance player should go ahead and try to have that because he's way ahead on points at the moment. So let's see what would happen. We'll write down yes for the uh, Wow, if Russia says no, you got to add 10 points. If the resistance says it, you subtract 10. Uh, if the resistance player alone says no. And if they both say no, nothing happens. Well, the Russians don't want to cease fire. The uh, Chechen units, uh, Chech uh, Chechnyan units, do. So, we'll say that. If both sides no, nothing happens. If Russia says no, you'll add 10 points. Russia says no. If the resistance player alone says no, which he doesn't, subtract 10. If both sides say no, if Russia says no alone, we'll add 10, 10 points to the political index, and that would give the... Uh, Chechen player a definite uh, victory 
on turn three. Basically, uh, not even quite a whole month into the war. So we could end the game right here as far as the ceasefire proposal. Let me do some thinking on this and I'll get right back to you. Well, strange enough, if both players uh, agree to a ceasefire, um, it's going to work out as a draw or a no victory. The Russian player has 29 victory points from cities that he controls and oil fields that he controls inside and outside of Russia. And adding the political index points, the uh, resistance player has 28 points. So if I were to quit now, it would end up in a no victory. The conflict drags on indefinitely. And I think that's where I'm going to put it right now. Um, I may play a little bit more off camera, but I think I've seen enough of the game. Although I haven't really done any, you know, haven't seen how propaganda works or how the air system works, which is very basic, but it just basically gives you odd shifts. Or with the airstrike or whatever ground attack, it uh, can reduce an enemy unit. But... I don't think there's a whole lot more to show uh, in the game. I got out of it what I wanted to get out of it. And I think I'm going to call it a draw. Um, yeah, I think, it, uh, I think it has some potential. I'd like to see weather incorporated because this conflict took place, oh, I think December, in the December time frame is when it started and it lasted, I don't know four or five months I think um, definitely throughout the winter season so I would like to see uh, some weather effects that would slow down units and uh, restrict air air power but uh, it's not that detailed a simulation and I really don't know uh, what the effects of weather were during the actual conflict so maybe weather didn't uh, play that big a role um, yeah, so, I'm, yeah, I'm kind of torn. I'd like to see the, I'd like to see a battle for Grozny. Uh, so, I may just, uh, skip everything but the resistance reinforcements and see what they get. I may play out a little bit more off camera and kind of see what happens. Um. I don't want to give up on it quite yet, but I want to see what the Russians can do against one or more of the hexes of Grozny. If the resistance player could gain some uh, more units uh, through the re reinforcement table, I mean, things can change dramatically. So, um, let's... I'm going to play a little bit more offline, then I'll come back and... Um, do some more commentary. Here we are back for a quick update. We attacked uh, the Eastern Hex of Grozny with 24th Division and the 19th Division plus uh, one air support and uh, support from the NCMD Headquarters Unit giving me two shifts to the right. The initial odds were one to one and we managed to get to three to one, roll the die, came up with a two, and that is a no effect on the uh, probe table. So the first attack on Grozny was a standoff. Uh, let's see, did I use the probe table? Uh, three to one, no, I used the assault table. So anyway, there was a no effect. Uh, and I will probably try one more time. Yeah, we would have taken the hex or reduced the hex if I had rolled anything better than a two. So, um, if the Russians could combine one more division in the attack, or add one more division in the attack, I think with a decent die roll, Aaron 
HQ support that they could probably take one or both hexes of Grozny. So we will see what happens. Uh, Grozny just rolled on the uh, random events table and they received a war protests. Rope. War protests, uh, anti-war protests in Russia. I have to double any points that I want to move over from the available box to the ready box. In our air support, we have them in the ready box al already since they went to the used box after being used. One was forced back. Um, so they go to the ready box didn't say that it was uh, reduced, it just uh, forced it back, so I'll have to review that table to make sure that their unit wasn't reduced when it retreated or aborted or whatever it is. So anyway, that's where I am right now on turn, well basically four, five I guess it is. So I played another turn here. Political index is at 44. So, um, right now the Chechenian player is ahead on points. Whenever the uh, Russian player decides to attack a city or use air support, close air support, ground attack, whatever, they, uh, ground support or close uh, support, they really take a hit on the political index. So, um, and I like that. I like how that's factored into the game. If the Russians are too aggressive, they're going to lose on points because every point on the political index is a victory point for the uh, resistance player. So, uh, there's a lot to like about the system. The rule book is a mess. The map is horrible. Counters are so-so. Uh, charts and tables, poorly placed. You have to, like I said, copy them off the back of the map if you're going to use them. Um, a simple player aid card would have been nice. Uh, the game was supposed to come with a Russian ops display, but like I said earlier, you, it's in an additional, um, apparently it was supposed to be in an additional issue of Game Fix magazine. And, uh, you know, it's just easier to grab, uh, make one with Corel Draw. I think I made this one in probably 15, 20 minutes. And, uh, it's pretty plain Jane, but it works. So, with that, I think I'm going to end this series on Green Line Chetnia. I've seen what I wanted to see, as I've stated before. Um, I don't know, it seems like the game seems to portray fairly accurately the conflict depicted. Um, I would recommend picking it up. I think I got this one for five bucks on punch, so uh, and about four dollars in shipping, five dollars in shipping, so I think the total was nine something. So if you find a cheap copy, go ahead and pick it up. It's got some really interesting systems and subsystems that you could adapt easily to another game or game system that you like. But um, beyond that, I think I'm going to wrap it up. I think that there is a distinct possibility that we could take Grozny on the next turn and threaten the second hex, the western hex of Grozny. But uh, with the 266th. Um, but it's almost like, yeah, I've got three divisions in there and I was thinking that's way enough, way too much. And now I'm thinking that probably should have brought in the last. Uh, Russian division or brought in some of the airmobile assets, uh, air assault units. So, anyway, until next time, I will talk at you later. Bye.